touch dial bonus feature, the data link system, the professional way to synchronize multiple receivers in a commercial or large environment. Please check out part one and part two of our touch dial tutorial covering the setup for our touch dial receivers, the touch dial four zone RGBW remote and the touch dial five zone single color dimmer remote control. We recommend watching these videos before performing any of the advanced features covered in this session. Remember to read, review, and understand all instructions before attempting to assemble the system. There may be key notes and tips that can help make the process easier. One of the most unique features of the touch dial system is the ability to synchronize multiple touch dial receivers, utilizing traditional data cabling. Although we've shown you how to do this through the wireless feature, it's bound by limitations of the broadcast distance between the remote control to a single receiver, which is approximately 95 feet. If the receivers are further than 95 feet from the remote, despite being synchronized, they will not respond in unison. The data cable function can be found on the left side of the receiver, where the learning key is located. You'll notice the D1, D2, positive and negative port connections. These are used to connect your data cable connections between receivers. This can be done up to 300 feet within a system, easily expanding the beyond the normal 95 foot range multiple times. You can also have as many receivers chained together within the 300 feet of data cabling. To do this, you'll need a spool of data cable. CAT5 is the most common. However, use data cabling that has been approved for your local electrical code. You'll also need wire strippers and cutters and a flathead screwdriver. To start, disconnect power to your assembly if you have a pre-existing system. It's important to do this step to prevent any kind of electrical damage to the receivers. The next step is to locate the jumper found just above the learning key. Make sure the jumper pin is on one of the header pins. If it is not, contact Diode LED customer service. By having the jumper located on one header pin, this identifies this particular receiver as a master unit or lead unit. Once confirmed, take another one of the receivers and relocate the jumper to go over both header pins. This identifies the touch dial receiver as a slave or follower unit. Following the instructions from the master touch dial receiver once connected through the data cables. Keynote, it's important that there is only one master touch dial receiver per chain, otherwise the system will not operate properly or worse, damage the system altogether. Cut and strip a length of data wire that is needed for your application. Most data cables will be color coded and color coded differently depending on the brand and style. You can use any colors you like that are available. However, it's best to follow your local electrical code requirements for data communication cabling. Strip the wire to expose approximately 5 16ths of an inch or eight millimeters of copper wire. For your convenience, an image of the dimensions can be found on the face of the touch dial receiver. The D1 positive and negative terminals represent the data input connection point, and the D2 positive and negative terminals represent the data output. The master touch dial receiver will not be using the D1 terminal. Insert the CAT5 cable into the D2 positive and negative terminals by using your fingers to press down on the tabs. If you're experiencing difficulties, use a pen or flathead screwdriver to gently assist the process. On the first slave touch dial receiver, insert the other end of the data cable wires into the D1 positive and negative terminals respectively. Repeat this process until all touch dial receivers have been chained together. You'll also notice a ground terminal for the data connection. This terminal is extremely important and should be the first wire connection done when using the data link system. Remember, it's important to have all your receivers data linked together before performing any synchronization processes. This will cause additional issues and troubleshooting if not done in the proper order. When you've completed your chain of receivers, it's time to begin the syncing process. Part one and part two of our touch dial tutorial covers this process, but let's go through it for a quick review. To begin, power up your touch dial system using your appropriate power supply. Next, turn on your touch dial remote, either the four zone RGBW remote control or the five zone single color dimmer remote control. Once confirmed the remote is on, Press and release the learning key on the touch dial receiver, followed by a zone number found on your corresponding remote controls. 
Remember, for the 4Zone RGBW remote control, after pressing a zone number, swipe your finger on the color wheel in a smooth motion in order to complete the syncing process. The lights will flash and begin responding to the instructions from your remote control. You'll notice all slave units chained together to the master touch dial receiver will perform the same action in unison and will not need to go through the synchronizing process. Keep in mind also, if you're using touch dial receivers that were previously part of a system or were used for a demonstration like our system in this video, you must reset the receivers by pressing and holding the learning key of the touch dial receivers until the lights begin to flash. Once done, perform the remote syncing process mentioned previously. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact our customer service or technical support teams at 877-817 6028 or email info at diodeled.com. Thank you for joining us 